There's no escape in the fact that winter can be hard on both you and your bike. But there are some simple measures you can take to help prolong the life of your bike's components. That's right. The roads can often throw up lots of salt, mud or general debris that your bikes just don't like. So as the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Thus, winterizing your bike will allow you to ride for longer and will allow for no mechanical issues. But it isn't just about protection of your bike. By winterizing it, it helps protect you, the rider, as well as others around you from all of those winter elements and other road users, making your time on the bike in the winter that much more enjoyable and safer. So we've pulled together our top tips to make your winter riding experience that much more enjoyable. Winter gives us the shortest days of the year and those dark mornings and dark evenings are often accompanied by low cloud and foggy conditions. A decent set of lights like the Lausanne ones we have here will help keep you safe and help other road users pick you out. Most of Lausanne's lights offer a daytime flash system which is where the light will change its flashing and its pulsing to alert the driver to your whereabouts on the road. Another example of a cool use of technology in the lights is with the Lazine Connect Drive here. It can pair with this remote control, so you can change it on the fly by pressing this button. It changes the modes and it can even turn it on and off. On the rear, the Lazine Laser Drive is really cool. It puts out these cool laser lines, as you would expect, on the road, which form a sort of lane beside the rider, and it's to help drivers understand the need for a safe passing distance. Perfect for whether you're going out for a long ride or just commuting home from work. There are two types of mudguards you can use for riding in the winter, either fixed or removable. If you're fortunate enough to have a bike like this Cube New Road here with the proper mudguard eyelets to run a fixed set of mudguards, then this is an ideal situation. They not only allow for much better protection for both bike and rider, but are much sturdier, so should last a whole winter without any issues at all. However, don't despair if you don't have a bike with mudguard eyelets, because removable mudguards should fit pretty much any bike out there. The downside of a removable mudguard is it doesn't offer quite the same level of protection for both your bum or your feet, but is better than not using a mudguard at all. Removable mudguards can damage easily though and can rattle, which can really get a bit annoying if you're on a proper three or four hour ride. Another important reason for running mudguards in the winter is if you take part in regular club runs, a lot will insist on you using a proper set of mudguards just for your own protection and also for the riders that you're with. If you don't run them, then chances are you'll be banished to the back of the group for the entire ride. So rides in the winter are often longer, meaning more time in the saddle and more time spent holding your bars. The ways to combat this are to tackle your contact points on the bike. That is either your pedals, saddle or your handlebars two of which, the pedals and saddles, very much a personal choice and it might take a bit of trial and error. But the bars, however, the bars can be tackled very simply. Either you can get a thicker bar tape to start with, or as you can see on this Trek Checkpoint ALR, we've double wrapped the bar tape, which is a simple way of giving yourself that little bit more comfort on those rough roads. This should all contribute to keeping your arms, wrists and hands that little bit happier over the winter. And don't worry about the extra weight because when springtime comes, you'll have a clean set of bar tape and you'll be racing them. The wet and gritty winter months can leave you asking a whole lot more from your brakes, but there are ways to maximize the performance of your stoppers. If you're using rim brakes, we'd recommend from time to time checking the surface of the brake pad. Keep an eye out for any general wear and tear or any bits of grit that might got stuck in there because this can wear out the wheel's rim. If your pads are looking a little bit shiny, it can mean that they're glazing over, which will affect their performance. 
But don't worry if that is the case with yours. All you need to do is give them a little bit of a roughing up with some sandpaper and it will bring them back to life. A lot of people now choose disc brakes for their winter riding, like I have here on my Oro Terra C. This is because they're more powerful, they give you a better feeling when you're actually on the brakes and you're not going to wear out your wheel's rim. You can maximise the performance of your disc brakes by choosing a sintered disc brake pad compound instead of a resin or an organic one. Lots of bikes come with resin ones already installed, but for the winter months when it's particularly wet and gritty, a sintered pad is going to last longer and it performs better at higher temperatures. We can't stress enough that you should keep an eye on how much life is left in your brake pad because the last thing you want to have is the metal on the back plate of the pad rubbing on the rotor because it's just going to wear out your rotors. And when it comes to cleaning your bike, please use disc brake friendly cleaning products because the last thing you want to do is contaminate the rotor and your disc brake pads. And then the final thing is if you do swap your pads over, please remember to bed them in. One of the most important things to help your bike through the harsh winter conditions is to follow a simple but effective maintenance regime. Firstly, think about the chain lube you use. You can get either wet or dry lube, but mainly for the winter, you want to be looking at using a wet lube. This is thicker, so it means it's not gonna get washed off so quickly when it's really, really wet and mucky. But the important thing to remember with wet lube is because it's thick, is it sticks to your chain and it attracts a lot of gunk. So make sure when you do apply it, you only apply a small amount, leave it a few minutes and then wipe off any excess. That way you eliminate all that horrible black stuff that can accumulate all over your chain and effectively all over the rest of your bike. The second thing, and for some people this is gonna sound a little bit alien, but make sure you degrease your chain regularly as well. So, as I said, the black horrible gunk that can build up over time on a very, very lube chain can actually effectively act as a grinding paste and wear away those expensive cassettes and chain rings. A bit of regular degreasing means that that's going to clear all that muck off and then you can apply that little bit of new chain lube and get things working perfectly and quietly and reliably again. Sticking with the chain, one of the other things that happens is chains wear out. So it's important that you check your chain for excess wear and replace it before it gets to the point where other more expensive parts can be worn out as well. This is a simple procedure. All you need is a little tool that you can pick up for a few pounds and you can then check your chain and before it gets too bad, replace it. Preventative measures can also help prevent costly repairs when it comes to spring. By giving your headset, bottom bracket, wheel hubs and pedals a service before winter really takes hold will ensure that they last a long time and remain reliable for years to come. Preparation and protection of your bike is key when it comes to winter. Whether that be blocking out the elements or trying to minimise that wear and tear which naturally will increase over those cold, rough winter months. When you're looking at what products are best suited to protecting that beautiful frame of yours, then one of my personal favorites is this frame wax. Once thoroughly clean, this will give you a beautiful, durable and glossy shine and will mask out any tiny imperfections in your frame. Now, other than a wax frame finish, most bike brands these days will provide you with frame stickers and chain guards to protect that beautiful paint from chips and damage through the chain or from cable wear. When it comes to winter wide tyres, we run anything from 28 millimetres through to 32 millimetres, but really it depends on your bike. Those with disc brakes are going to be able to run wider tyres than those with rim brakes. So for example, my Oro Terra C is come with some absolutely monster 32 millimetre tyres. Wider tyres offer loads of benefits, especially in the winter. For starters, they're gonna be a whole lot more grippy, especially in the rain, but they're also gonna make the bike's ride quality a lot more comfortable, which is perfect for when you're doing those base winter miles. If you are swapping your tires out, now is a great time to choose something hard wearing. These Continentals are renowned for being tough in the winter, and they're gonna last you a lot longer. So get your nice fancy summer tyres off the bike and put them in storage until next year. 
We can't overemphasize the importance of having a clean bike for winter riding. So definitely our top tip is to do some regular cleaning using some good quality products, especially concentrating on the frame, the drivetrain and your tires. It also gives you a chance to check your bike regularly for any damage that could potentially cause problems on your next ride, especially with things like your tires and tubes. So you can just check to see if there's anything that could cause a ride ending puncture. So there you go. Those are our essential tips for winterizing your bike. If you've got any top tips for us though, please let us know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it. And we'll see you next time.